Okay, so after we've uh, bent our wires, uh, incorporated our strengthener, set up our teeth obviously, uh, we're ready to wax up the case so we can invest it. I'll do this video in increments, so I'm not gonna take up a lot of time, and, uh, but you can watch it uh, at your convenience in increments as well. This is, uh, it's pretty much like a full upper and lower wax up that you've seen before, but obviously there's a few differences. So what you want to do is just remove each model from the articulator. You can leave it on the mounting. You don't have to relieve it, uh, remove it from the mounting as of yet. We have the outline of the flanges here. As you recall from, the, from our surveying uh, exercise, this tooth here, tooth 1-3, we're going to leave it as a ridge lap and this will have a flange. So I'll start with this. And I usually uh, uh, use my number seven spatula to flow some wax on here. You don't have to go exactly to the line of your outline you can certainly uh, leave it a little bit uh, longer so you can have some uh, room to trim after. So as you recall from the full upper and lower wax up, we're gonna apply wax just a little more than what we need, so we have some wax to carve back. You might see some videos uh, of people using a font stock to apply the wax, which is this tool here, but I find that a little bit too big. And I just find a little more control of my wax with my number seven spatula. I'll flow some wax around this tooth here, make sure it's completely sealed. And I'll clean it up after. So as you can see, I went beyond the outline of the flange that I had, which is quite okay. If you're a little bit long with your flanges, they don't take much time to trim back with a stone wheel or a burr. But try to keep it as tidy as you can. So I'm gonna let that cool off and I'll move to the palatal side. Unlike a full upper and lower denture, we don't have an acrylic or light cure, I should say, uh, trial base here to give us the proper thickness. So we have to create the thickness. So what I typically do when I move to the palatal side, I'm going to flow about half a millimeter of wax throughout the palate up to our score line here. And you can also score, sorry, go over the, the food line here with a pencil so it's a little easier to see through the wax. So initially, you want to flow wax throughout, maybe a little more than half a millimeter in between the undercuts to make sure you have sufficient thickness in your acrylic base after you process to trim it back. So I'll start with that.
And again, hold your model in such a way that you're utilizing gravity to create a controlled flow of your wax so it doesn't go all over the place. What you don't see on camera as I'm pausing, I'm just blowing a little bit of air just to let the, the wax cool down a little bit so it doesn't overflow. This becomes very efficient when the consistency of your wax cup is almost like a semi-melted consistency, right? So you can pick up wax rather easily and flow onto the model surface. So make sure you flow your wax into the interproximals just by heating your instrument and just going back over it. Good flow of wax around the wires. And you wanna feather out the wax around the wires, almost like a tapering effect so it doesn't create a bump with your acrylic base. And if you recall, when we bent the wires, we tried to keep them as close to the model as possible, probably no more than half a millimeter away from the model surface. Otherwise, if you have them too far, by the time you incorporate the wax on top of them, the model, the acrylic base becomes way too thick. So I got some thin areas around the rugae, so I'm gonna go over it again. pretty good. Then I'll take my alcohol torch and gently flame the wax so it somewhat evens out a little bit and creates a smoother model, a smoother surface for the next step. Not too much because you don't want the wax to soften too much and have the wires move around. And I'll do a little bit on the outside here too. Okay, so the final step for the palatal side is to take a piece of base plate wax. I've cut out a little square. Gently heat it over your Bunsen burner. And adapt it without pinching it thin. Try to keep the thickness of the wax consistent and that should give you just the proper amount of thickness of the acrylic base on the palette which is about two to three millimeters so I'm going to use the broad portion of my fingertip try not to pinch it excessively thin while the wax is still malleable. Okay, so from here on, I'm gonna cut the wax back and I can see my height of contour from a surveying, becomes very helpful, but you can certainly leave it 
a little bit longer. I don't want to finish it to the height of contour. I want to go a little bit beyond the height of contour. So I'm going to hold it in such a way that I can cut it straight across with a sharp blade. And here, I'm going to follow my outline, but I'm going to put it back on the articulator in just a bit, just to verify if there's any interference with the opposing dentition. And that goes for the posteriors as well. Now, if you happen to cut it short as you're doing this, don't be alarmed. You can always flow some more wax on top of it. So I'll peel off the excess. This section here, past the, uh, the food line, I'm gonna cut it a little bit longer. And therefore, I'll be sealing it down a little bit longer, just to give me a little forgiveness with the processed base. Once I cure this into acrylic, so I can have some room to trim it back. So I've gone a little bit longer, maybe about a millimeter to a millimeter and a half. Okay, from this point, I'm gonna take, again, my number seven spatula and just kinda of clean it up a little bit. And take note that this particular instrument that I'm using, the tip of this number seven spatula, is not as sharp as something like this. Or something like this that I'm gonna be using a little bit later to do my final carving. So therefore, I'm reducing my risk of damaging the model. So I'm using a rather dull instrument. Okay. So I'm gonna seal this down all the way around. And I'm certainly going beyond the outline indicated from our survey and design because I'm eliminating a lot of the lingual undercuts here. And as you'll see later on when we invest this case, this becomes very helpful. Otherwise, on a case like this where you have lingual undercuts in here in the cingulums, you'll have to cover that with stone, and that becomes very messy. So it's a lot easier to cover it in wax, which obviously will turn into acrylic, and just cut it back after you process. So you can see there that the wax is completely into the interproximal beyond my outline of the acrylic base. So by covering the teeth with wax on the lingual side and obviously stone on the facial side after we invest it, there'll be no undercuts. There's no undercuts on the occlusal surfaces. So you don't have to cover that with anything. All right, I'm gonna seal it at the posterior border here. Just flow some very small amount of wax.
Okay. I'm just going to flame things over with the alcohol torch just to smooth it out. And it actually gives me just a smoother surface to look at and assess before I do any carving. And it gets, a, gets, gets rid of a lot of the uh, fingerprints when I was adapting the wax. Okay, I'm gonna go back on the labial side and I know the wax that I'm using here is rather hard. So I just use my alcohol torch just to soften it a bit. In the initial carving, I'm gonna use again my doll instrument just to get a general shape. And what you wanna do now, you wanna mimic or duplicate the gingival length or a clinical crown on this tooth or the length of the clinical crown of this tooth compared to that tooth and so on with the lateral. You want to have it the same. And you want to shape the margin the same configuration as the adjacent natural tooth. Scrape off a little bit of the extra wax. Hopefully the mold that you selected will allow you to do that. Otherwise, if you selected a tapered tooth when you actually needed a square tooth, you're gonna have a very hard time doing that. Once again, like you've seen in other videos for complete dentures, I would like to carve wax towards me, not away from me. It follows the natural hinging motion of my, of my wrist, and therefore I have a little more control of my instrument. That looks pretty good. Uh, I left it just slightly short of where I really want to be with these two. So these are slightly short, so it gives me a little more room to do my final carving. Just going to clean up this flange a little bit. Okay, then we can start carving it back. We're looking for about a millimeter of gingival margin thickness. and some anatomy to mimic the alveolar process. Apical to the margin. Make sure that, again, the margins are tapered interproximately, right in here, so it doesn't create a very bumpy finish and result into a food trap. And I'll do the same thing on the lingual side a little bit. And I'll taper it and carve it out a little more into approximately 
and that will minimize the amount of trimming I'll have to do after. I know through experience I'm going to have to taper this section here towards the tooth, so I'm just kind of pre-doing it with wax so it minimizes the trimming that I'll have to do after I process. Just take out a little bit of the excess wax interproximately. Whether you do it now or later, it doesn't make a difference. You can certainly trim this out, but I think it's a lot easier to work with wax. It's a lot cleaner, a lot quieter. And if you make a mistake with the wax, you can always flow some more on there and redo it again. It's going to blow off the excess wax. And then reflame everything. And a little bit of a uh, piece of gauze with a little bit of wax remover, not much. I'm gonna wipe off some of the excess wax on the facial side of the teeth and the lingual, whatever's there. And use the dry portion just to wipe off the excess wax remover. Blow off a little bit of the wax remover from the margins and then I'll get into a sharper instrument and fine-tune the margins and I hope you can see it on video how much of a of a sliver of wax that I've taken off not much Make sure that there's no wax above the internal papilla, otherwise it will show as acrylic and it's very difficult to get rid of it after you process. And take a look at things, make sure you get the right height. It looks like the 2-1 is a little bit longer than the tooth I've set up, the 1-1. One, one. So I'll, I'll carve this a little bit longer. So it gives me the same amount of clinical crown length. So if the patient happens to have a very high smile line, it'll look the same. a little bit longer with the lateral. I'm going to expose a little more of the cervical third of the lateral so it reflects the natural tooth on this side. I'm trying to make it the same height. A little bit more. And hopefully you've preserved enough tooth length when you were trying to set up the teeth and actually trimming it back. And certainly some of the cervical margin or the cervical margin on the tooth to be able to do this. If you've trimmed it too short, 
it becomes very difficult to do this. So before I do any carving on the inside, I'm going to place it back on the articulator to see if there's any interference with the wax up. And there is. You can see that the pin now is not quite touching the incisal table. So I'm just going to visually assess in here where it's touching. And I hope it shows on camera a little bit high back here. So hopefully the wax is not an, a lot. So just by squeezing the articulator together, I can feel it and I can see that it's come a little bit closer together. Now I'll take the model off the articulator again and it should have some imprint of the opposing teeth and certainly it's right here. I'll carve that back. Don't want to have any interference with the wax in centric. If you do, it'll become very difficult to do selective grinding on the case after you process and remount the case on the articulator to start selective grinding. So make sure you don't have any interference with your wax. And I'm gonna do a final carving with this lingual apron here around the teeth to give me a nice clean finish. We don't wanna have feather type of finishes with our wax. We want to have a very definite ledge with our wax finish. It makes it easier to invest, makes it easier to pack acrylic, and it's a lot easier to trim back. No interference back here, so I have a lot of forgiveness here to finish this as I wish. Trim this back a little bit. A little too much over the occlusal here. Okay, I'm gonna blow off the excess. Put this back on the articulator. Smooth out the wax and obviously soften the wax just enough. And I'll put my articulator back in centric to make sure that there's no interference. And you can clearly see and hear that I'm back in centric. My pin is touching the incisal table. So there's no interference with the wax anywhere on the lingual side, which is great. So I'll take this off again. And again, I'll take my number seven. And now I'll do a bit of a cleanup here, just enough to clean up the little apron. You can approach it from either side, but just make sure you don't create any, any undercuts or pits. So I'm exposing just enough tooth above the height of contour, but I've covered enough tooth to eliminate any possible lingual undercuts So it's a lot easier to invest.
So I'm getting a little closer to the finished product here with my wax. Can you do this in acrylic? Yes, you can, but I think it's a lot more challenging. So get into the good habit of, of doing this from the beginning. Lingual side, I'm going to expose the lingual anatomy of the tooth. But provide enough cover on the lingual side of the tooth for adequate chemical bond. like that. This side here, I can do that now as well, but I'm going to be exposing a lot of the lingual undercuts. So I'm going to leave it because this is very easy to trim back after we process. And I know there's no interference here now with the opposing lower incisors. I'm going to verify again one more time. So I'm going to leave it. taper this back make sure all tooth surfaces that are exposed are free of any wax residue so I'll go back with my wax remover and just kind of pinch things together, clean everything off. Smooth things out. Don't want to overheat it now because you've made a nice clean wax up and the wax will over melt. Put it back on my articulator, just have a final look here. Make sure there's no interference. If there isn't, I can hear my incisal pin hitting the, the table. I'm very close to being finished now. I'm going to smooth out this labial flange here ever so slightly just to round things off. And the key, just like we did with full dentures, is to have a nice rounded, clean margin. Very, very important. I'm just going to chill this wax a little bit more with the air nozzle. Typically I will set this aside and move on to the lower model and come back to this to come back to this to do my final carving and by then the wax has hardened a lot more than this. So it's always nice to carve with very very hard wax. It gives you a very sharp and refined finish. But I'll be very careful. I'll move it a little bit closer for you guys to take a look. So the amount of wax that I'm remo removing now is very, very negligent. Very little. Just enough to clean the margin. And I'll do the same thing on the lingual side. This I gotta be a little more careful because the wax that I used on the lingual side it's just regular base plate wax, which is a whole lot softer than I use, typically use on the facial side. But nevertheless, we've got to make an effort to have a nice clean finish.
And again, if I don't remove the wax on the lingual side, for the prosthetic teeth, the teeth will not retain inside, will not be retained inside the investment. They'll just fall right off. So you want to make sure you expose enough tooth surface here to create or to expose the undercuts, I should say, for investing purposes. Now, into proximately, above the interdental papilla, there is some more wax there. And as fine as this instrument is, it's not narrow enough to get in there. So typically I'll use a scalpel blade and remove the excess wax. Doesn't look like a lot, but if you do a good investing job, then this wax will become evident in acrylic and it's very difficult to get rid of it in acrylic. So take the time to get rid of it now. Sometimes if my instrument is too sharp, I'll just twist it over a bit to get in there. I'll use the back side of it. Instead of the leading edge, I'll use the back edge. But you can see a little bit of wax that I removed from the interproximal, just enough. Clean it up some more. A clean, hygienic finish for any type of dental appliance that you make, removable dental appliance that you make, does not happen by trimming it happens by a good wax up. So this is where all the magic, so to speak, happens. I'm just going to go back and do some more carving here. And I want to taper this margin a little bit more as I feel that it's a little bit on the thick side around the lateral. And taper it here as well. So we want to make a very gentle transition for the patient. We don't want to have any bumpy looking flanges. But just a nice gentle transition. from the appliance to their oral structures. And the finer you get with your wax ups, the less work you're going to have to do with your trimming. And I think you're going to have a much nicer result, definitely a more hygienic result and more aesthetic result. trying to create a bit of a gingival roll and a periphery roll and a, a little concavity that we talked about into approximately as well as just below the margins. All right, I think I'm very close to being finished. I keep saying that, but every time you look at it, you want to do something else to it. 
just a gentle flame with your alcohol torch just to smooth things out. So the smoother the finish now here, you barely have to touch it with a burr after you process it on the palatal side. So it's the per proper thickness, a nice smooth finish, there's very little work to do there. And I'll do a little bit around the teeth here on the facial. want to preserve the sharpness of the margins, but at the same time, I want to create a very rounded, soft finish for the rest of the wax up. So if you felt like you kind of melted the wax around the margins, you can take your instrument one more time and very gently now, a much sharper angle of attack and clean up that margin just a little bit more. So this really brings any dental appliance, removable at least, to life. To have this very sharp margin creates the illusion that the acrylic and the teeth are two separate entities not just one big blob of acrylic. And finally, I'll just go back on it, over it very gently. I'm holding my alcohol torch relatively close to my wax up, so I'm not creating a lot of heat that way. So that's the end of that. I'll put it back on the articulator, just have a final look. Make sure I didn't create inter any interference with my wax. I haven't. Looks good. And the lower is pretty much the same process. I'll have it waxed up and we'll, take a, we'll do a final assessment on the wax up on the lower. And the only difference is we're going to apply, again, the wax that I have in here, I'm gonna flow wax all over the lingual like I did on the upper, as well as incorporate a sheet of base plate on top of it, which I'll show you in the next video.